And in <clears throat> theater classes, I know you have your students <clears throat> reveal their inner selves mm -hmm. in ways uh, that they uh, don't get to do in other classes. Mm -hmm. But how do you get your students to open up? Well, um, the, the revealing to inner selves is mostly learning to reveal their inner selves to each other. Um, so we actually do, uh, in my beginning classes especially, we spend the whole first quarter on what are considered games and team building exercises. But you should never underestimate the value of, of play and, and um, group fun because it really does create kind of an ensemble feeling and it, and it establishes trust and it allows them to uh, go forward and, and do that scary thing which is to, as you know, stand in front of people and, and talk. Uh, most adults are terrified. Um, so it isn't so much that you get over your terror that I teach them, it's, it's that you learn how to master your terror. And uh, I have terror. Uh, I'm feeling terror right now. You might be too. I don't know. But uh, we have our techniques. And so I try to teach them some of that. And then, I, and then hopefully I get them to come out for the after school play. And um, that's really where the, the, the hardcore acting part of it comes in. I, I direct very differently than how I teach. But the teaching is more about um, building confidence and, and building trust and, and, and just learning to get up and talk. And how do you direct? You said you direct everything. Well, that's where I actually ask them to bring their life experience to their roles. Uh, we uh, often hit situations where a character has to go through a crisis, and so we, we look for ways to substitute a similar crisis, maybe, or uh, um, it, it's all fakery in a way, but, but if you can use your own life experience in this, um, it, it, it's the best. Um, I also do a lot of uh, what's known as physical theater. So that's one area where the class work we do is directly applicable to the after school work. We do a lot of um, clown work, a lot of mask work. Uh, last few years I've gotten enamored of, of puppetry. And so a lot of that is, is complete opposite to what we would think of as, as method acting. Um, but what my students will learn in class is that you create a system for yourself that works drawing from as many possible sources as you can um, expose yourself to. So I try to, I try to keep it fresh. And, and, and for myself, I try to bring in new, new stuff. I, 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 I get stale sometimes, so I have to go out and get reinvigorated. I'll take a workshop or I'll... My daughter recently uh, has spent a couple of summers out in Vermont with the Bread and Puppet Theater, which is a a place that's famous for its its tradition of radical puppetry and, and giant huge pageant puppets so we've been doing some of that work but going out there was a transformative experience for me as far as um, where I would like to take my teaching the last 10 or 12 years of my teaching career. And in the classroom itself what would a visitor see in your theater classes? Oh uh, well that's fairly standard they'd come in and they'd see us sitting in a circle probably at the beginning of class um, I, I, I believe in the power of a circle where everybody's equal um, we all sit on the floor uh, they can wear their shoes or not wear their shoes I kind of tell them that the theater class is a safe harbor in many ways uh, we take time to share what's going on with us personally a lot of it is just to keep it as personal as possible I really believe in the face-to-face -face dialogue um, kind of breaking down barriers after that, we do some uh, rhythm exercises as a group, and, 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 and it's just kind of a warm-up and a way to meld into a group mind. And then we'll work on various projects. Right now, we're actually working on uh, the Edward Lear poem, The Owl and the Pussycat, my beginners. And then we will, uh, th they will memorize that. Some of them did today. And they will uh, create little silly uh, presentational pieces out of it. And again, this is, this is the beginners. A lot of these kids have no interest in becoming actors. They're, they're freshmen for the most part. And uh, many of them are finding that this is a quick way to create a group of friends. And some of them are actually starting to drift towards our after school program. Um, the advanced classes right now are, are getting more into uh, sort of serious scene work. And uh, we'll be getting into that uh, pretty heavily the second semester. First semester, we tend to dwell more on the plays we're doing next year. So we do a little bit of dramaturgy in advance as well. Uh, let me follow up on two points uh, that mm -hmm. you made. One was uh, you made reference to breaking down barriers. Yes. Uh, elaborate more on how the uh, class breaks down because that's so important. It's, it's extremely important and, and, I, and I have found, uh, I've had a couple of really transformative experiences at San Inez High School. Um, one of them was uh, about eight years ago we did a production of The Circuit uh, written by Francisco Jimenez which most Santa Marians will know about that story. 
and we, um, it was a project designed to ease tensions between our white and Latino communities. And so we, we re actually recruited uh, uh, people from the Latino community to take part in the project. And we worked with a core group for a year, in, in a, in, and it was a very unusual balance of, of, we actually had more Latinos than whites, and, and it's actually just the opposite at our school. And we found that it was the fastest way to create understanding was to do a play together. Now, it helped that the play was about Francisco's experience as a migrant in the Santa Maria Valley, um, because it was something we could easily relate to. But as far as the friendships that were made out of that project, uh, many of them are still active. Um, we ended up taking it all the way to Scotland. It was so successful. And we, we toured it all around Santa Barbara County. And, and um, but even more recently, um, I, I've been an advocate since then of saying, hey, this is it. This is where r the real dialogue happens the fastest. Because as you say, you have to reveal your inner self. Um, I say it's, it's the quickest way to team build and create ensemble. But in order to do that, you have to share truthfully and honestly, and you have to um, provide a, a space where people feel safe and respected. And um, that all happens in, in my theater. So, um, And I remember that play well in the discussion groups afterwards, and it was very powerful. Yes, it was. It was yeah. very successful. I'd like, I'd like to actually bring it back at some point. I have to talk to Leo yeah. Cortez about that. And, and the other point you made was that, you know, uh, the, stu the students uh, generally don't want to become actors, but your expectation, would you like to see them become actors? It depends. I actually um, caution them about going into it too soon. I, I've got students who are interested in PCPA as an alternative to a four-year college, and, and while I encourage that, I also uh, uh, advise them that you don't want to step into a career track too soon in life, because when you're 18, you don't really know who you are, in my experience. Um, even as far as a four-year college goes, you, you may want to um, consider carefully the step you take when you're 18 because you're a much different person at even 19, but certainly 20 and 21 than when you were 18. You have much different expectations for yourself and you've got a couple of years out of high school under your belt. So I, I, I actually caution people to go out and, and live first, maybe even take a gap year to continue to pursue theater, yes, but also look at other ways that you might want to spend your life um, in different directions. You never have to give up theater. It just can be one more thing you do. Uh, make the case for theater arts education. Why is it so important? I believe it's the essential fine art because it's the um, place where all fine arts collaborate. And not just fine arts, but you can have the, the liberal arts also and the sciences with, and technologies. And, but you, you, you have visual art, you have spatial art, you have three-dimensional art, you have performance art, you have lighting design and sound design and, and set building. and so, so there's everything. There's math, there's science. But it, it really all takes place. It all comes together to create this, this storytelling environment that is really a very, I think, primitive um, impulse in, in people. Um, so that's the community gathering point, or at least it used to be. And in some places it still is. And you know,